Welcome to another edition of Gaming Memories. Today I'm moving away from the Commodore 64 to take a look at one of my favourite consoles. It's the NEC PC Engine, also known as the TurboGrafx-16 in Western markets. And I'm going to be taking a look at my top 10 original games from my collection for the PC Engine. Now I never actually had a PC Engine when I was a kid. I never even saw one in fact. The only place I really saw them was in the pages of magazines such as computer and video games where I'd look enviously at this tiny little machine that was able to create these arcade perfect conversions of games like R-Type, Vigilante and Space Harrier. I was amazed at the small form factor of the machine and yet the huge power that seemed to come from it to create these arcade conversions and original games as well of course. And it had a sort of allure to it as well because it being this Japanese console that you couldn't get easily in the West at that point had quite an exclusive nature to it. So I used to read the reviews of the games in the magazines and be quite fascinated by this machine but as I say never saw one and never obviously played one. So fast forward to about 2006 and I'd already started to collect retro games consoles. I'd got the obvious stuff like the Commodore 64, SNES, Mega Drive, things like that. So once I'd got the obvious consoles, I started to look at the more obscure consoles that I might be interested in, and the PC Engine was definitely one of those. So I imported one from Japan, probably cost about 40 to 45 pounds all told at that point. It was still reasonably cheap to get hold of these things at that point. And I got myself one of the grey core graphics machines because first and foremost it was cheaper than the original white PC Engine and also had AV output built in so you didn't have to get a modification done or buy one that was already modified which usually meant it cost more money. What I think is really interesting about the PC Engine is it kind of crosses a bridge between the 8-bit and 16-bit eras and the hardware itself is actually a hybrid having an 8-bit CPU but 16-bit graphics hardware and I think that's reflected very much in the games it has. They're quite simplistic games in general, arcade style games, maze games, puzzle games, shooters, platformers. There are a few RPG and strategy games but there's nothing that's particularly complex so it kind of blends that 8-bit aesthetic of games that are quite simplistic but with the 16-bit graphics power and also obviously the sounds really good as well and then you've got the storage media for the games itself I'll never understand how they got such great games on these tiny little who cards so let's move on to the games then once I got my PC Engine I didn't really need to be buying these arcade conversions they might have been almost arcade perfect at the time but I got a main machine by then so I was playing arcade perfect games on that because they were the actual arcade games. So most of my collection is original games, I don't have the biggest collection, there are a few prominent games missing from it. But we're going to be looking at my top 10 original games from my collection for the PC Engine. All games that originated on the system, they may have been ported to other systems later but they started off on the PC Engine. There are a few exclusives in there too. So before the countdown commences I just want to mention a couple of sites that I found really useful when I was gathering information about these games. I also used a few images off there for the cover artwork. So firstly there's videogameden.com, they've got a ton of reviews of PC Engine games. And also pcengine.co.uk, they've got a directory of every PC Engine game ever made. So if you're looking to build up your own PC Engine collection then I definitely recommend those two sites. I also want to say thank you to my wife Anna who helped me film some of the footage for this video for the two player modes on the games. So enough talk, let's get on with the countdown, my top 10 original games for the PC Engine. So before we kick off this top 10 I'd like to give an honourable mention to Bomberman, released by Hudson Soft in 1990. This wasn't the first Bomberman game but this release was the first to feature the multiplayer battle mode that the series has become most well known for. Up to 5 players could compete against each other using the PC Engine multi-tap. Additionally there's a single player mode that sees you planting bombs to eliminate enemies in a series of stages across 8 worlds. This version of the game is very simplistic compared to the later releases with only one multiplayer map but it's still a significant game in the series that originated on the PC Engine. So I thought it was worth a mention even though it's not quite good enough to make the top 10. Speaking of which, let's kick off that top 10 now. Kicking off my list in 10th place is Batman, released by Sunsoft in 1990. This is based on the 1989 Tim Burton film but is very different from any of the other Sunsoft Batman games which were scrolling run and gun platformers for the most part. The PC Engine Batman is a scrolling overhead view maze game where Batman has to complete tasks on each stage such as collecting all the Joker's poison cosmetics, planting bombs or bizarrely removing graffiti from paintings in a museum. Each level is inhabited by the Joker's goons who can be dispatched using the Batarang. Initially Batman moves slowly and only throws a single Batarang a short distance, but power-ups can be collected to speed up and increase the frequency and distance of the Batarangs. 
Enemies are easy to defeat to begin with but later on they will move faster, chase Batman and shoot at him. As levels progress new features and hazards are introduced such as roads that must be crossed whilst avoiding traffic and also teleporters. The game also features cutscenes that accompany the transition from one location to another. This is a pretty interesting, unique idea for a Batman themed game with some well realised locations and a cool soundtrack. It was pretty odd to do a maze game and quite strange to see Batman so vulnerable to begin with but it offers a decent challenge though it does get somewhat repetitive. It does suffer also from a serious difficulty spike if you lose all your power ups on later levels as enemies that shoot or chase you can't be killed or avoided very easily. It's not an amazing game but it's definitely an interesting curiosity and an exclusive to the PC Engine library. At number 9 we have B-Ball, released as Chu Man Fu on TurboGrafx-16. This was released by Hudson Soft in 1990 and it's a single screen maze based action puzzle game for one or two players where you play the role of a cute little girl who must roll coloured balls around the play area and deposit them on their relevant coloured squares. Once all balls are in place the level is completed and you'll receive bonus points for remaining time. Each level is inhabited by animal enemies such as monkeys, tortoises and penguins who can be killed by firing one of the balls at them. Balls can also be pushed forwards or pulled backwards and can be moved around corners. Various power-ups are available and in later levels you can use the ball to destroy some walls of the maze. Also included is a small bonus kickball game for two players and a level editor. This is quite a nice original idea and fun to play with typically cute and colourful Japanese characters and a jolly soundtrack but gameplay is somewhat repetitive and definitely too easy especially as you periodically get bonus stages where you can earn tons of extra lives. This was probably intended for younger players but if you want an undemanding casual action puzzler then it's worth a look. In 8th place we have Gomala Speed, another 1990 release this time from UPL. This is a unique game idea that is best described as a cross between Snake and Gauntlet. The player controls a snake-like robotic being called Gomu. In each level you must gather all of the snake's body parts and then use that body to encircle and collect all of the orange pellets. When all the pellets are gone the exit to the next stage opens up. You can drop bombs out of the last body segment which will draw nearby enemies towards them and stun them allowing the player to encircle them to temporarily eliminate them and earn bonus points. Levels vary from single screens to larger scrolling mazes and some have different objectives such as uncovering the floor to reveal items while later ones feature bosses. This is definitely a clever and original idea for a game and it's well presented with some simple but nicely drawn graphics and a catchy soundtrack. The first couple of levels are a nice introduction to the gameplay mechanics but it does get hard very quickly and the controls are quite difficult to master. By the time you get to the first boss it will certainly be frustrating you but it deserves a place in this list for the originality alone because there's no other game I've played that's quite like it. In 7th place, and excuse my pronunciation of this one, is Genji Tsushin Agadama. There's no English translation for that. This is released by NEC in 1991 and is a side-scrolling run and gun based on the Japanese anime series that aired from 1991 to 92. You take on the role of Genji progressing through 6 levels facing a variety of enemies and bosses in different environments. The gameplay is a mix of shooting and platforming with the screen constantly scrolling forcing the player to rush through the levels. Genji can jump and fire as standard, but his true power comes from the ability to collect and use powerful magic attacks that include fire, wind, beam, genie and lightning. Other power-ups are available such as temporary invincibility and the assistance of Genji's rabbit-like flying robot Wapuro. So this is another one of the more original games on the system, sort of like an endless runner crossed with a scrolling shoot 'em up It's got typically Japanese graphics full of colour and variety with some bizarre enemies but the backgrounds are fairly generic platforming locations such as deserts and caves. 
The constant scrolling means there's a lot of timing involved in the platforming sections which can be tricky when combined with shooting enemies and sometimes makes them hard to avoid. Progress is much easier when you've collected all the magic power-ups though and you can unleash huge attacks like whirlwinds, lightning and an army of genies. The first level can actually be quite tricky and the next two after that are fairly easy in comparison but then the difficulty really ramps up. It definitely takes a few plays to understand the game mechanics and can be frustrating at times but a forced scrolling platform shooter is an interesting idea that hasn't been done on a lot of systems. At number 6 in my list we have Takahashi Meijin no Shin Bukanjima, which I probably didn't pronounce right and is better known in the west as New Adventure Island. This was a release from Hudson Soft in 1992. It's an arcade platformer and the fourth game in the Adventure Island series. In this game you play the role of Takahashi Meijin, or Master Higgins as he was known in the west, and as he and his wife are leaving the church after getting married, shadowy figures kidnap his wife and some of the island children. The player must progress through six stages with four areas each to rescue the children and then defeat the main boss in his fortress to rescue your wife. Each area requires you to dash through as quickly as possible as your health is always decreasing, negotiating a variety of platforms and dispatching enemies with a selection of weapons. You must also collect fruit to maintain your health and find other useful items in eggs such as a skateboard and a fairy that grants temporary invulnerability. At the end of the fourth area of each stage a boss must be defeated. Now the history of Adventure Island and its relationship to Sega's Wonder Boy is well documented and would take far too long to go into full details about here, but let's suffice to say that both series began with the same game, but while the Wonder Boy series adopted RPG elements for its sequels, most of the Adventure Island sequels stuck to the gameplay style of the original game. Just to confuse things though, Hudson Soft actually ported all of the Wonder Boy sequels to the PC Engine, changing the title and character designs, and yet bizarrely, when they converted Wonder Boy 3, they decided to call it Adventure Island. Anyway, this is New Adventure Island and in essence is an enhanced version of the original Wonder Boy with more detailed and colourful graphics and new power-ups. As a big fan of Wonder Boy, this game was always going to appeal to me. The graphics and tunes are great and it retains the arcade style gameplay with fast progress through the levels necessary due to the constantly depleting health bar and some pixel perfect jumping required to land on moving platforms without being killed by enemies. I should warn you though that it's absolutely rock hard in places and can be hugely frustrating so if you're looking for a slower paced Mario style platform with lots of exploration then this definitely won't be for you, though the boss levels do seem to have taken some visual influence from the Mario games. Halfway through this top 10 list now then, and in 5th place we've got Spin Pair, which was released by Media Rings in 1990. This is a falling block puzzle game in the style of Tetris. I'm going to try and explain how to play this game, but it might be easier just to watch the video. So shapes representing a variety of objects including animals, vegetables and even office equipment fall in pairs aligned horizontally but must be used to create vertical pairs. Each object is half filled in and to make a match you must pair it with the same object but with the opposite fill. Using the controller buttons you can switch places of the pair of shapes but you can also rotate the filled section of shapes to try and align it with the opposite half of the one that's already fallen. If you have objects of the same type lining up horizontally in the same row and you remove one of them then all of them will disappear. Occasionally the game will speed up making it more difficult and the only way to get it to slow back down is to remove objects as quickly as possible. Several game types are available including a story mode, an endless arcade style mode and a two player battle mode. This game is confusing to begin with and takes a bit of getting used to but is one of the more inventive falling block games out there and I'd put it on a par with Tetris and Puyo Puyo and definitely above something like Sega's Columns which I always found really boring. Graphics are nothing special though it does have a bit of Japanese cuteness factor and the tunes are nice but repetitive so where this game really stands out is the playability which is challenging and addictive. With three different game modes it has a decent amount of longevity too and I'd say it's something of a hidden gem in the PC Engine library. In 
in fourth place is Final Soldier, a Hudson Soft game from 1991. This is a vertically scrolling shooter and the second instalment of the Star Soldier series to be released for the PC Engine. Earth is under attack from hostile aliens and it's the player's duty to stop them. Unlike other games in the series, the player is given the opportunity to customise weaponry before heading into action. Four main weapons are available and you can switch between them by collecting coloured pods dropped by destroyed enemies and collecting the same type again increases the strength of the active weapon. Secondary missiles can also be collected along with pods that follow the ship around and greatly increase its firepower. These pods can be sacrificed to release devastating smart bomb explosions. The game features seven stages with mid and end of level bosses and as is traditional for the series also features two and five minute score attack caravan modes. Most people would probably say that Final Soldier is the weakest of the Star Soldier games on the PC Engine and I have to admit I've never played Soldier Blade which is generally thought to be the best but I prefer this game to its predecessor Super Star Soldier mainly due to the fact that the earlier game makes you restart from a checkpoint when you die sometimes even making you repeat the entire stage. Final Soldier on the other hand just has your ship respawn exactly where it was when you lose a life and also allows you to customise your weapon configuration in the setup screen before you start. Graphics and sound wise it's not a marked improvement over its predecessor with the first stage being in space before progressing to land based stages and a decent soundtrack and sound effects throughout. Difficulty wise it's slightly easier than Super Star Soldier which is another reason why it appeals to me and the ability to change the speed of your ship at will and detonate your remote ships as giant smart bombs are great touches. One criticism is that the bosses are a bit dull and can take an age to destroy but aside from that it's good fun and while it's probably not the best space shooter on the system it's the one I enjoy the most. Moving into the top three then in this list and in third place is PC Genjin also known as PC Kid or Bonk's Adventure on the TurboGrafx-16. This was released by Hudson Soft in 1989 and is a platform game that tells the story of Bonk, a young caveman who is on a mission to dethrone the demonic lizard king Drool. His only weapon is his bald head that can be used to either headbutt enemies or you can also attack by jumping up in the air and diving down head first to smash them. Bonk can also use his teeth to climb trees and walls when required. Pieces of raw meat can be collected to increase the player's power. Maxing out the meat quota will make him invincible for a short amount of time, allowing him to destroy everything in his path. Defeating enemies yields points and usually releases a small collectible smiley. These are totaled after defeating the boss of each area, restoring health based on how many were collected. The game features several environments including grasslands, jungle, caves, underwater lakes and even a journey inside a giant dinosaur, not to mention several hidden levels and bonus stages. This is obviously the PC Engine's answer to Mario and Sonic and has more similarities to Nintendo's game in terms of the pacing. It's really colourful with cute and funny graphics, some catchy tunes and great sound effects. Different types of terrain offer different challenges and some levels scroll in different directions to add to the variety. Later games in the series might have offered bigger levels with more exploration like the Mario games but I actually prefer this one as it's closer to an arcade style game even though there are still secrets to be discovered. I'm not particularly good at the game as I find it hard to control the jumping and mess up the timing of the flying headbutts a lot but I can still recognise it's a really good and highly playable game and Bonk's a worthy mascot for the system that can stand alongside Mario and Sonic with pride. At number 2 we have another platformer, it's Parasol Stars, released by Taito in 1991. The third part of the Bubble Bobble series, this is a cute platformer for one or two players which is primarily single screen but does feature some sideways scrolling levels too. The heroes from the earlier games have retained their human forms from Rainbow Islands and are known as Bubby and Bobby in this game. The game takes place on 8 different worlds, each with a distinct theme. Each features 7 rounds with the last one hosting the boss that must be defeated in order to progress to the next world. Replacing the bubbles and rainbows of the earlier games, each player is armed with a parasol which can be used as a shield to stun or hurl enemies and to capture droplets. It can also be used as a parachute to slow the player's falling speed. 
Almost every level has droplets which drip from the top of the screen and roll along the platforms. The player can capture these on the parasol and throw them at enemies. As in earlier games, destroyed enemies yield fruits that can be collected for points as well as a variety of power-ups. Bubble Bobble's my all-time favourite game and I'm a huge fan of Taito's cutesy platformers in general, so this was bound to be high on the list. It's not quite as good as the games that preceded it and there are some scoring secrets that I've not worked out yet, but it has all the elements that made Bubble Bobble and Rainbow Island so popular. Cute sprites and colourful backgrounds, infuriatingly happy tunes and sound effects, a fair difficulty curve and simple controls that make the game accessible yet hard to master. The Parasol is a versatile addition that is definitely more complex than the Bubbles or Rainbows from the previous games and it does take some getting used to but allows different approaches to be used for the gameplay. It's odd that this was never released as an arcade game as it's definitely good enough to be one, but the arcade's loss was the PC Engine's gain in this case and it's certainly the best version of the game which was later ported to the NES and Amiga amongst others. We've reached the end of my countdown then and in first place is Cybercore, released by IGS in 1990. This is a vertically scrolling shoot em up set in the future when Earth is overrun by enormous cybernetic monsters known as hyper insects. In order to combat these enemies you must pilot an insect themed biojet called the Chimera which can change form by collecting coloured power ups which earn more hit points and upgrade its firing pattern and weapon capability. Four different types of firing patterns are available depending on the item colour collected. The speed of the ship can be varied by using the select button at any time and other power-ups such as smart bombs and invulnerability can also be collected. I can't really put my finger on the reason why but this is obviously one of my favourite PC Engine shoot em ups. Perhaps it's because it's got a relatively easy difficulty curve or because the insect theme is something a bit different to all the space shooters and colourful cute em ups that the system is home to. The graphics are pretty generic but work well and the soundtrack is excellent. One thing that really stands out is how much you have to use the bomb attack to deal with ground based targets. Lots of vertical shooters have a ground attack but it usually seems like an afterthought whereas in Cybercore you have to use it a lot and destroying the ground based enemies can often yield extra power ups. Also the first two bosses can only be killed with the ground attack which is very unusual. The power up collection process is interesting too as you have to shoot a large insect that spits out the different colored power ups in sequence and you can conceivably get two power ups from one carrier if you're quick enough. Movement of the ship is smooth, the control is precise and the whole game just seems really well designed with a reasonable distribution of power ups and fair respawn points if you die. The first couple of levels are fairly straightforward but the difficulty does ramp up with quite a lot of bullets being flung around on later levels but it never seems like an unfair progression. Overall it's a great vertical shooter that does enough to stand out from the crowd and is one of the more affordable ones for the system as well at less than half the price of the Star Soldier games and Gunhead for example. That rounds up my top 10 original games for the PC Engine then. There's some well known games there for sure but hopefully some surprises too that you might not have played before. Let me know what you think about my choices in the video comments and I'd also love to know your top 10 original games for the system. If this is your first time watching one of my videos then please check out my other content and consider subscribing for a weekly dose of retro gaming goodness. Thanks for watching and have a great day.